In today's video, we'll talk about a more readable way to make a copy of an array. Now, I know I have talked about, uh, if you remember, slice, the array method called slice, and how to use it to make a shallow copy of an array, right? It was pretty simple. If you have here an array, let's say, of one, two, three, and four, right? And you wanted to make a copy, we'll do something like, let's say, copy equals array dot slice, right? And you wouldn't pass any parameters. And, um, and if I were to console log our array and also our copied array and run this, you'll notice I would get, well, both the arrays. But if I were to modify one of them, let's say six, because why not? You'll notice just the first one gets modified. So that makes sense. But this is not readable. I mean, okay, sure. If you know about slice, it's fine and all. But if you don't know, you're like, what in the world? Does he want to actually slice an array? For what reason? Right? For what reason does he actually slice? And uh, that person might not be realizing that, okay, so slice is actually returning a new array. And due to we due to us not actually passing any parameters, it defaults to slice from the beginning or and up to the end. And due to us not actually providing any parameters, it defaults to well slice just the whole thing, right? So we're just gonna get a copy of it. So here's an alternative: you can use a an array function this time called from. And here's how, how it goes: you say array, the actual array class dot from and this guy takes in a few things but mainly the first parameter is an either an iterable or an array like so i can pass in here our array and now if i run this you'll notice we get the same result right the first one is modified and the second one is done is not now this is basically 99 percent that you need to know about this uh from function but we're going to take a look at the second and third parameter that this guy can take in the second one is a bit interesting you can actually pass in the callback for the map array method. So we have discussed about the map array method, you can check up top, but basically we can, instead of just straight up copying every single element, we can actually map that. So instead of just copying one, it can copy, let's say it's double. So just one times two inside our new array. Now sure, when you're using the map array method, you already get a copy of it, but this is nice because it also works on iterable objects, not just arrays. Right, so you can kind of convert uh, the iterable while also mapping it. And that makes it more efficient than first converting that iterable to an array and then mapping, right? That's the reason behind this second parameter. And we can give it, for example, so imagine this array is actually an iterable that is not truly an array, but that's besides the point. And well, let's, let's just map uh, every single element to its double, as I said. So you can do here x, and return x times two, for example. And if I now run this, you'll notice, well, the first array has been modified as I added six to it, but the second array is a copy of the first initial array times two. So that works really nicely. So that's the reasoning behind it, performance more or less, because if you do array dot from and then call map is less efficient. It's much efficient to do uh, them both at once, right? And Lastly, the third parameter is again, very simple. It's like in the maps array method second parameter, which is the this argument for our um, callback function. But this is, since this is an arrow function, we won't get a this parameter. So let's, we, can actually, we can actually just change this to a function if we want to. Let's actually do that. All right, so this is now a simple function. And as the third parameter, we can just pass in, for example, um, let's say our initial array, right? Why not? And then if I console log this, you'll notice that we get um, our initial array four times on the screen before printing it our modified array. So we get it four times on the screen because we map four elements. So we get uh, first for the first element, second for the second element and so on, right? I hope you get the gist of it. But basically it's exactly the same as the map array method call, except it does it all in one uh, big swoop, right? So you don't have to actually um, first create an intermediate array. 
Now, I hope this was useful to some of you that uh, like readable code. If you have any questions, do leave them down below in the comments or on our Discord server. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time. Take care. Bye.